The Civil Engineer Corps is a staff corps of the United States Navy. CEC officers are professional engineers and architects, acquisition specialists and CB combat warfare officers. They are responsible for executing and managing the planning, design, acquisition, construction, operation, and maintenance of the Navy's shore facilities. The Civil Engineer Corps is under the command of the Chief of Civil Engineers and Commander, Naval Facilities Engineering Command. As of 19 October 2018, RADM John West Corker relieved RADM Brett J. Muhlenberg, and became the 45th Commander of NAVFAC and Chief of Civil Engineers. CEC ranks range from CW02 to RADM, though the community is phasing out Chief Warrant Officer ranks in favor of limited duty officers. As of August 2018, the CEC active component end strength was 1,285 personnel composed of one RADM, three RDMLs, 76 CAPTs, 166 CDRs, 278 LCDRs, 470 LTs, 171 LTJGs, and 120 ENSs, distributed worldwide. As of August 2018, the CEC reserve component end strength was 448 personnel, composed of two RDMLs, 29 CAPTs, 80 CDRs, 142 LCDRs, 156 LTs, 9 LTJGs, and 25 ENSs, distributed worldwide. Five several civil engineer corps officers, primarily those serving during or around the time of World War II, have held the rank of vice admiral, and one officer has held the four-star rank of admiral, but there are no current billets within the U.S. Navy that require civil engineer corps officers of either rank. History Civil engineers were employed by the Navy Department as early as 1827, when Mr. Loamy Baldwin was appointed to superintendent of the construction of dry docks at Boston and Norfolk. Prior to the passage of the Act of 2 March 1867 civil engineers were appointed by the Secretary, but under authority of that Act they were to be commissioned by the President by and with the advice and consent of the Senate, they were appropriated for as part of the civil establishment at the several Navy yards and stations under the control of the Bureau of Yards and Docks until 1870. At that time their pay was regulated by Section 3 of the Act of 15 July 1870 that fixed the annual pay of officers of the Navy on the active list. Appropriations for their pay have been made since 1870 under the head of Pay of the Navy. The discretionary authority given to the President by the Statute of 3 March 1871, to determine and fix the relative rank of civil engineers was not exercised until 24 February 1881, when relative rank was conferred upon them and fixed as follows, one with the relative rank of Captain, Captain two with that of Commander CDR, three with that of Lieutenant Commander LCDR, and four with that of Lieutenant LT. .The Navy regulations for 1876 failed to list civil engineers among the staff officers of the Navy, and the uniform regulations for that year did not prescribe a uniform or a core device for that class of officer. In 1881, after having had relative rank conferred upon them, civil engineers were instructed by uniform circular dated 24 August to wear the uniform of officers of the line with whom they had relative rank, omitting the star, which is a distinguishing mark of the line, with the following distinctive marks and devices instead of those worn by other officers. The sleeve lace to be on light blue velvet. Shoulder straps, border embroidered gold, body light blue cloth and the letters CE Old English embroidered in silver in the center. The same letters to be similarly embroidered on frogs of epaulettes. In 1905, two crossed silver sprigs, each composed of two live oak leaves and an acorn sometimes called crossed bananas was adopted as the insignia of the Civil Engineer Corps in lieu of the Old English letters CE, and worn on the epaulettes, shoulder straps and collar of the service coat. While the pattern of this core device remained the same, uniform regulations issued in 1919 specified that it was to be embroidered in gold instead of silver and worn on the sleeve of frock, evening dress, and blue service coats, above the gold lace strips, and on shoulder marks for white service coat and overcoat. 
By these same regulations the light blue cloth worn under the sleeve strips, and worn on the shoulder marks since 1899, was abolished as a distinction of the corps, however is still present in the light blue color of the stripes worn by the enlisted sailors, pay grades of E3 and below in the Navy's construction field. In 1939 the CEC was composed of 126 active officers. By VJ Day that number had grown to only 200. However, there were over 10,000 reservists providing the leadership of the construction battalions. In December 1941 Admiral Ben Moriel proposed the creation of three naval construction battalions. A problem then confronted Budox, who would command the construction battalions. Naval regulations stated that military command of naval personnel was strictly limited to line officers, yet Budox deemed it essential that these construction battalions be commanded by officers of the Civil Engineer Corp., who were trained in the skills required for construction work. The newly formed Bureau of Naval Personnel Buppers, successor to the Navy's Bureau of Navigation, strongly opposed this transgression of naval tradition. Admiral Moriel took the question personally to the Secretary of the Navy, Frank Knox, who, on 19 March 1942, gave authority for officers of the Civil Engineer Corps to exercise military authority over all officers and enlisted men assigned to construction units otherwise known as the Seabees. For those engineers assigned to the Seabees a silver Seabee was mounted to the center of the CEC crossed oak leaves insignia. The CB logo incorporated the CEC insignia, with one on each arm of the CB, just above each glove. The first CEC killed in Pacific combat were Lt. Irwin W. Lee and Lt. J. G. George W. Stevenson along with 23 enlisted of the 24th CB. They died in an air raid on 2 July 1943 on Rendover Island. The Seabees named their naval training center at Quaddy Village Eastport, Maine, Camp Lee Stevenson in honor of them. The first CEC killed in the Atlantic combat was Lt. Carl M. Olsen on 10 September 1943 at Salerno, Italy. During World War II the Seabees had a number of battalions transferred to the Marine Corps. Those battalions were then given USMC designations and the men were given standard Marine Corps issue in addition to their dress naval uniform. For CEC the standard gold and silver officer corps insignia was replaced by a brass subdued one on the garrison hat. The battalions involved were the 18th, 19th, 25th, 53rd and 121st, see 17th Marine Regiment, 18th Marine Regiment, 19th Marine Regiment, and 20th Marine Regiment the 31st and 133rd CBs were issued USMC fatigues and attached to the shore parties of the 4th Marine Division and 5th Marine Division for Iwo Jima. The CEC involved would have worn the subdued insignia also. Other battalions were tasked with Marine Corps shore party assignments both prior and post Iwo Jima. Operational Naval Demolition Unit No. 1. Was the very first USN. Demolitions. Unit. In early May 1943, a two-phase. Naval Demolition Project. Was directed by the Chief of Naval Operations. To meet a present and urgent requirement. The first phase began at Amphibious Training Base ATB Solomons, Maryland with the establishment of Operational Naval Demolition Unit No. 1. Six officers and 18 enlisted men reported from NTC Camp Perry Dynamiting and Demolition School, for a four-week course. Those Seabees, led by Lt. Fred Wise CEC, were immediately sent to participate in the invasion of Sicily. When the unit returned to Camp Perry most of the men were assigned to the new Naval Combat Demolition Units being formed there. Naval Combat Demolition Units were led by junior CEC officers. There were over 200 NCDUs formed with all but five being requisitioned for the UDTs. 5th Amphibious Corps had identified Coral as an issue for amphibious landings in the Pacific and determined Naval Constructions Battalions had the only people with any experience with the material. It came to Admiral Turner's attention that Lt. T.C. Christ C.E.C., from NCB-5 was in Honolulu from Canton Island where he had been involved in blasting Coral. The Admiral commissioned Lt. Christ with developing a method to do it under combat conditions and gather qualified men in Pearl to form a unit. Lt. Christ had gotten 130 together when the disaster at Tarawa happened. 
With Kwajalein the next operation Lt. Christ's 130 men were used to form UDT-1 and UDT-2. CMDR. E. D. Brewster was selected to command UDT-1 and UDT-2 had Lt. Christ. For the Marianas operation, Kwajalein, Roi Namur, Siapan, Tinian, Enewetok, and Guam, Admiral Turner recommended 60 Silver Stars and over 300 Bronze Stars with Vs for the Seabees and others of UDTs 1 to 7 that was unprecedented in U.S. Naval, Marine Corps history. For UDTs 5 and 7, every officer received a Silver Star and all the enlisted received Bronze Stars with Vs for Operation Forager. Tinian. For UDTs 3 and 4 every officer received a Silver Star and all the enlisted received Bronze Stars with Vs for Operation Forager Guam. Admiral Richard Lansing Connolly felt the commanders of Teams 3 and 4 Lt. Christ and Lt. W. G. Carberry should have received Navy Crosses, USMC Shore Party Commanders Guam. Third Marine Regiment, CMDR. Welland CEC 3rd Battalion 19th Marines, Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 25 Bougainville, 3rd Marine Division CMDR. Brockenborough CEC 71st CB with detachments from the 25th, 53rd, and the 75th CBs and as well as the Marines. Iwo Jima 23rd Marine Regiment CMDR. Raymond P. Murphy CEC, 133rd CB the Naval Special Warfare Command building at the USN SEAL base at Fort Pierce is named for LTJG Frank Kane CEC Commander of NCDU-2. In March 2014, RADM Catherine L. Gregory, CEC, USN became the first woman to lead the CEC. See also Military Engineering of the United States Seabees Admiral Ben Moriel <laughs>